it's at past eight, uh, and you are tuned into BBC Radio Lancashire. Tonight on The Big Interview, we're going to meet a Pakistani-based uh, writer, poet, singer, composer, musician, uh, amongst uh, many other things as well. Mohammed Sami has uh, carved out a style of his own inspired by the uh, mystical Sufi tradition of Qawali. Described in one interview as a 21st century Qawal, his short Sufi spells uh, aim to convey spiritual meaning in short and easily digestible chunks that straddle the sometimes blurry line between classical and contemporary. Before we speak to Mohammed Sami himself, let's have a little listen. Uh, this is uh, Mohammed Sami and it is uh, Nami Danam. <laughs> कहाँ 
इन सा कहा करो फिर की बेड़िया तोवा जरा भी अकल हो तो आदमी दीवाना हो जाए शहर तक सब का है अंजाम जल कर राख हो जाना बने में है फिल्म कोई शमया पर वाना हो जाए नमीदा नम नमीदा नम नमीदा नम नमीदा नम ये आलम देख कर तूने भी आंखें पैर ली वरना कोई कर दिश नहीं थी कर दिश अयाम से पहले यही दस दूर दुनिया है यही रस में मोहब्बत है के सब अपने ही होते हैं कठिन अयाम से पहले नमीदा किसने शाख गुल ला कर करीब आशिया रख दी के मैंने शौक गुल बोसी मैं the sound of mohammed sami that one is a namida nam and i'm very pleased to say that mohammed sami joins us in the studio now and is i'm honored to say our first guest in nearly 2 years <laughs> since this whole armageddon began we haven't had a guest in the studio so i'm very pleased to say that you join us thank uh, you so much for inviting me on your show thank uh, you so uh, much. absolute pleasure so um i guess first of all we should uh elephant in the room is that uh you come all the way from pakistan yes what are you doing here first of all uh I came here back in back on 15th of March and uh, the objective was to be part of a very noble cause of Minhaj Welfare Foundation that is uh, the raising funds project for the orphan care project rather of Minhaj Welfare Foundation so I uh, I am having a plan to perform at six different venues three out of them have uh, been executed so as far as the six places are concerned the places are were uh, three places were Cardiff Birmingham and Leeds they're done and the next three destinations are uh, um uh, there's uh, Glasgow uh and uh, Manchester mm. and uh, the last one is London so all those shows are meant to facilitate the uh, raising of the funds for the orphan care project of Minhaj welfare so uh, that's a brief project of mine 15 days brief project and uh, i had to manage out of my entire busy routine because my, my profession i am something else so from beginning <laughs> to end of the of the six shows how how long a space of time are we talking like is it six shows in a, mm. just a matter of weeks or uh yes 15 days six shows 15 days and six shows and that's quite a grueling schedule yes quite a how lot. do you manage quite that? A, quite a lot I don't I don't even know. Do you have any time to rest in between? You have a few uh, days here or there, I guess. Mm, no, not particularly because when we landed here, uh first two days were meant for the jamming sessions and then uh, the next consecutive three days uh in one row I had mm. to perform one day and another. So that's what Kawals do. But <laughs> although I'm not that traditional Kawal, I'll inshallah. See, that's in, that's an interesting point. Mm. Um that that you bring up there because you mentioned That's what Kavals do. Yes. And a few seconds before that you said mm. jamming session. Yes. Now those are two very <laughs> very, <laughs> very different concepts that you you, me, you you rarely get get together. Let me tell you how 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 uh, I uh, said these words because uh, I'm not here with my own team. So uh, the only person that I'm having with me is the person who gave music for all my spells for all my kalams he's sitting right beside me JLE Mr JLE so he's the only person from Pakistan who is with me the rest of the team uh, has been uh, uh, combined or uh, managed locally from UK so I had to practice my own spells with them because without the practice you cannot perform on the stage mm-hmm. so I had to indulge myself in some jamming session or practice session with them in order to Uh, get them fluent fluent with my stuff you know yeah. uh, because uh, it's very uh, very uh, special in nature the genre is very special and uh, i had to uh, make my team uh, fluent with my spells while they perform on stage so though the first two days were dedicated for the jamming and the next three shows were consecutive i had to perform for one hour mm. per, per per concert so yes the routine is hectic 
explain to us the concept behind the nature, the genre, managed locally from these words because uh, I'm um, that, that you bring up there because you mentioned that's what Gavals do. Yes. And a few seconds before that, you said mm. jamming session. Yes. Now those are two very, very, <laughs> very different concepts that you you, me, you you rarely get get together. Let me tell you how 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 uh, I uh, said these words because uh, I'm not here with my own team. So uh, the only person that I'm having with me is the person who gave music for all my spells for all my kalams. He's sitting right beside me, JLE, Mr. JLE. Mm. So he's the only person from Pakistan who's with me. The rest of the team. Uh, has been uh, uh, combined or uh, managed locally from UK. So I had to practice my own spells with them because without the practice, you cannot perform on the stage. Mm -hmm. So I had to indulge myself in some jamming session or practice session with them in order to uh, get them fluent fluent with my stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, because uh, it's very, uh, very uh, special in nature. The genre is very special and... Uh, uh, I had to uh, make my team uh, fluent with my spells while they perform on stage. So, though the first two days were dedicated for the jamming, and the next three shows were consecutive. I had to perform for one hour mm. per, per per concert. So, yes, the routine is hectic. Explain to us the concept behind the spells and and why you choose to call them spells. Uh, I call them spells. Uh, there's uh, basically a detail behind that. The uh, the message that I'm trying to give to the youth and to the entire world is basically the concept of the tasawwuf. Uh, this is a word that is widely misinterpreted, not only in a particular location, I think so. Globally, it is misinterpreted. The word tasawwuf basically refers to your relationship, to your linkage, to your love and your attention towards your God Almighty. And uh, the more you are attentive towards your God Almighty, the more you are... Uh, inclined towards love with your God Almighty, the more rank you have as far as the word Tasawwuf is concerned, the more you are elevated. Or uh, uh, I think so, uh, that uh, this Tasawwuf, uh, the, the message of this Tasawwuf has been uh, uh, used by the different schools of thought historically, especially the Chisti school of thought. They communicated this message of Tasawwuf through Kawali, uh, as far as the historical reference is concerned. So uh, the major objective of Kawali was that keep the words as primary and communicate these words to the people by uh, using the different uh, elements that are uh, uh, familiar to the people, you know, like compositions, like musical instruments, so that when they uh, hear such teachings, they feel that they're listening to something that is uh, normal, that's not something outdated, mm. you know, so so that the message uh, is not uh, ignored on the end of the audience. So that was the primary objective. So keeping all those things and uh, keeping the requirements of the modern era, I coined up the uh, concept of spells because kawalis are usually half an hour long, mm. 45 minutes long, one hour long. People do not have time for that. So I started the term short Sufi spells. Short because they'll not prolong for more than seven to ten minutes, keeping in view which, the which, style which, of the people. Which, in in Western terms, is still yes. quite long. Yes, you know, yes. For, you know, still quite long. But yeah. uh, in comparison with the traditional qualities, it's mm. not like that. Then, secondly, uh, Sufi uh, because it relates with the concept of tasawwuf. Because Sufi tasawwuf, these are the two linked yeah. words and spells. Yes, I try to communicate those messages to the audience that provides the food for thought to the audience. So these three words have some significance behind uh, under which I release all my spells currently. Alhamdulillah, around thirteen to fourteen spells have been released to date. Out of which uh, I think so by the by the blessings of Almighty, I've got around millions of views on the YouTube. I, I I don't think you should use the word released. Uh, I think you should say cast. Oh, yes. <laughs> I've, cast. I've cast 15 spells. Cast 15 spells. I, I, I noticed while I was uh, on your YouTube channel watching your... Uh, beautiful videos to the to the songs, uh, to the spells rather, um, that some of them begin with a disclaimer. Yes, and I I just like to read the disclaimer mm. because I find it quite interesting. Mm. It says mm. the singer slash performer does not by any means represent any particular sect, school of thought, mm. or spiritual following. Mm. Attributing him to any such class shall solely be personal perception of the person so attributing him and shall be deemed as a mere reflection of his personal interpretation. How how important is it for you to 
disassociate yourself from sectarianism, whatever we, whatever you want to call it. Like, t- tell me a little bit about the motive behind that disclaimer. First of all, it's extremely important for me because currently the biggest issue that Islam and uh, the Muslim uh, the, the Muslim uh, concept is facing right now is the division among the various sects, and uh, this problem is is getting so grave that. Uh, a person, uh, despite the fact that he or she tells that I do not belong to any particular sect, on the basis of what he says, on the basis of what he believes, they uh, strict, uh, they they somehow try to classify that person into some particular sect. As far as my content is concerned, uh, since I mentioned the name of uh, Holy Prophet and his family a lot in my uh, kalams and there's a reason for that because the basic concepts of Islam is all surrounded around them but the people believe as if since he's mentioning these names so much he might be belonging to this particular <laughs> sect I never want that I never want because that's what Islam is but people do not try to understand that so in addition to that uh, there are very little, I think, so people who are currently into Sufism and the specific uh, area that I belong to currently. I don't, I don't see any person who is doing uh, such such work right now. So I don't even want the people to to uh, attribute me to some, you know, uh, Rumi or Turkish sect. So I do not want to associate myself with with with, with any particular sect and uh, fall victim to uh, the the usual stigmas that are attached with those sects because I do not believe that any. First of all, I think that all sects are right as far as the bases are concerned. Yes, after that they have the different uh, dimensions that are you know uh, different in some perspectives, but uh, again. Uh, I don't even fully believe all the uh, points of each sect. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think so. There is only one religion. Uh, if we talk about Islam, it's it's a single religion. It does not talk about any particular sect. And I'm sticking to it. I'm trying to stick to it. I'm trying to communicate the soul of Islam without associating myself with any particular sect. That's what Islam says. That's, it, that, that, uh, that's the message that is hidden behind this particular statement. Ba- basically, refraining from what we call sirkabai. Yes, yeah, sirkabai. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so, how? Tell me now, how you like? What, what do you remember as your earliest musical memories growing up? What What were the earliest memories that you have musically? As far as the music sense and all those composition stuff is concerned, that was uh, definitely by birth. Each and every artist knows that uh, he has been gifted with this particular talent. So when I grew up, I kept on listening to whatever uh, played around me, you mm. know. Uh, I listened to even UK Bangra, you know. Mm. Yes, yeah. because definitely you grow, uh, grow in a locality and whatever is being played on the radios and the TVs and you keep on listening on to them. Uh, likewise, I also used to listen to ghazals. I was not very much uh, liking uh, those things at that time. Likewise, uh, Kavalis were also being played, but uh, I my mental corridors were not that much mature to uh, grasp the meanings of those, uh, of, uh, those Kavalis, you know. So uh, whatever was being played, I used to listen to them. So even uh, I still remember that I loved the voice and still I love the voice of Sajad Ali. So he oh. was and he was he was and he is my favorite as far as the vocals are concerned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not uh, I'm not uh, ref- referring uh, from the perspective of lyrics, but as far as the vocals and the compositions are concerned, Subhanallah. Beautiful voice. <laughs> yes, honestly beautiful. So voice. so uh, again uh, the the shift. Uh, so as far as what you question is that uh, that's what I remember. When I started uh, to listen and enjoy the music, that was probably the start. Uh, that that's uh, that might be, I think, so when I was uh, five or six years of age. So that was the time. Even even the Bollywood songs used to play, and uh, I also kept listening on to them. So it's basically a journey of evolution, you know. So yes. each each uh, stage of your life that you pass, you evolve. You uh, kept on changing your priorities and your likings and dislikings as far as the music is concerned. Same stands true for me as well. So the turning stage was actually 2006. Well, we'll come to 2006 mm. uh, in just a moment. We're going to uh, go to uh, a track or we're going to go to a Kavali app. Unfortunately, we won't be able to play all of it because okay. it is 20 minutes long. Okay, yes. Uh, but it's uh, it's an absolute classic. It's the yeah. sound of the Sabri brothers. It's Bardo Joli. Uh, tell me why you chose this particular track today. 
one of the most traditional lath and one of the most traditional khawalis that uh, is in the praise of sarkar ad walam sallallahu alaihi wasallam so uh, what should i say other than that karam ho mujh pe habibe khuda I'm not afraid. 
کچھ نواسوں کا صدقہ عطا ہو As much as it kills me, we're going to have to uh, leave that there. It is the sound of the Sabri brothers, and it is uh, Bhardo Joli. Uh, absolute classic. And that, I think, it is fair to say, uh, is the definitive version yes. of that particular uh, Kavali. Um, and we were saying off air while we were just uh, chatting away how. Kavali is a broad church. Everybody's exactly. kind of, you know, you, you, you listen to Kavali's by Khan Saab mm. or the Sabri Brothers or Aziz Mia, and they're three very, very different styles. They are three different dimensions. Dimensions, indeed. And even down to the instrumentation. <laughs> exactly. The instruments that the Sabri Brothers use, I've never heard... Like, Nusra doesn't use those type no, of no. instruments. Khan Saab never used those Khan type Saab of Khan Saab only used rhythm... Uh, Tabla rhythm. Exactly. That's it. That's it. No other exactly. rhythm. Exactly. And these guys would use strings and exactly. it's just totally they, they used they used banjo, they used dholak, they used tabla, and they used several other items at rhythm. Hmm. As far as Mia Saab is concerned, he only used two dholaks and he had three hamnawas and he was a one man army. Yeah, but his voice was enough. <laughs> his voice was enough. <laughs> voice he was alone enough. handled each and everything. Indeed. <laughs> so in in terms of Kawali, mm. this is gonna be a hard question. I don't know if it's a hard question. Mm. It may be a hard question for you to answer. Mm. Which, 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 which side of the fence do you fall on? Are you are you are you a Nusrat fan? Are you a Sabri Brothers fan? Like, do you do you have an a an a, not an allegiance, but kind of you know a, a favorite? Aziz Mia, without a doubt. Really, the words that you use for Nusrat, I use these words for Aziz Mia mm. because the reason is that the word Kavali, the why it was uh, uh, coined by Ustad. By Hazrat Amir Khusro, he was uh, he's said to be the first person who who was a kawal. The purpose of kawali was never these rags, sagams, mm. or because these classical things were all added later. The concept of kawali is that the words should be made primary. All the s- other elements of kawali should be secondary. Mm. May it be composition, may it be musical instruments, may it be, for example, in today's day, video. All these things are secondary. Just in order to give the the uh, this this form of kawali uh, shape that the people easily receive. Mm. That's it. So as far as uh, both other genres are concerned, I want I want to say genre styles. Yeah. Sabri Brothers and Nusrat are concerned. They use too much. Ra- if it's for example one hour of kawali, you'll easily listen to twenty to thirty minutes of rags and jugal mm. bandis and all those things. If you turn on Aziz Mia, you won't see that much music. That contains bombardment of the words. That's what Kavali is all about. He never focused that that much onto the uh, musical instruments mm. and the rock thing. And I think so. His voice was also not that much uh, having that style or that flavor in order to put up the rocks. But what he did was he was the master of that, and mm. uh, he was the only person of his kind. And he he invented his own genre, and people loved it. Pakistan's first rapper, exactly. I would say. Uh, exactly. He was he was a hard rock metal. Yeah. Metal. Exactly. He was he was a rapper. So uh, the message of Kawali is basically words, not rags, not sargams, not jugal bandiya, not khumri. Uh, uh, what can they say? Uh, word not coming. Murkiya. So it's not about that. It's about communicating the message. Communicating the message to the audience, so that should be dominant. So that's why what 
uh, the, the the spells that I produce, I even keep the musical pieces within the verses mm. as short as possible. I want that if the length of the track is seven minutes, six minutes should be dedicated to the verse. That's why what I have excluded is the excessive rags and all those things. And I think so. That's what the people have loved. They have received, uh, they have understood that seven minutes contains six minutes of uh, pure message. And all those additional things, they have been excluded. Time is short. People need something crisp in the short period of time. So that's what I have focused on. <laughs> that's, that's controversial. <laughs> you may say that. It's very controversial. <laughs> it's very controversial to... to I mean, do, are, are, you, are, are you of the opinion that those extra things mm. hold value? Any value? Yes. What value? Too much because uh, listeners vary from person to person. The choices vary from person to person. There are a huge number of people who love the sargams mm. that Ustad Sahib used to do, that Khan Sahib used to do. The rags that Sabri brothers used to... My favorite vocalist from the entire Asia is Makbul Sabri, the little one uh, amongst the brothers, yeah. Ustad brothers. I loved his voice, yeah. even more than Ustad Musafat Ali Khan. Uh, but the rags that they, that they used to uh, do in the middle of the Kavali, people loved those mm. and even I loved them. But that's classical music. You should try to understand. That's not mm. That's classical singing. Yeah. That's that's what they were. They are said to be the descendants of Tan Sain, Sabri brothers. Mm. Like why Ustad Nusfat Ali Khan, uh, he was. Uh, uh, I think so. You know better about him, uh, as far as uh, uh, who were his uh, ancestors. Yeah. Uh, I think so. Mubarak Ali Khan. Mubarak Ali Khan. And, 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 and Fatih Ali Khan. Khan. As far as <laughs> Miasab is concerned, no one in his family was there. Mm. The same stands true like for me. Like yourself. Yes, exactly. Uh, I'm a child of the country, you know, mm. and uh, uh, the, um, I'm the son of a white collar job holder, and you know. Uh, well, how does an accountant <laughs> become a kaval? This is my, this is my my burning question. Do you like how? See, we still have two more tracks to play yet, and we've got ten minutes left. And you know what? I'm not going to play the tracks. I'm just going to talk, if that's okay. <laughs> um, I'm 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 curious to know mm. within. The industry mm. within the Kavali game, mm. so to speak. Mm. How are people like yourself mm. perceived? And the reason I ask that question is because historically there has been such an emphasis on lineage, on mm. you know the John Sheen being you know it being passed on. Mm. And somebody like yourself, mm. just coming out of nowhere, saying, "Right, who made you I don't. I, I want to know how. How are you seen by others in the industry? Is there any discrimination? Discrimination may be a strong word, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Mm. Uh, please define the word others. Uh, are you trying to say about the people who have the lineage? You know? Yes, oh. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, we Made you say we it use for the, me. We use the word tari for those. Right. <laughs> 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 Definitely, you know, uh, let me give you an example with the help of, for example, I'm a lecturer as well. Uh, the person who has been teaching for the last 30 years, he has, he's an experience, he's a professor. Suddenly a teacher comes up, he's a young chap, and you know he's uh, he has an experience of just two years, and the, and the student starts loving uh, that particular teacher. What feeling that professor will be having for that teacher, the same stands true here, mm. you know? Uh, the young chap who has just arrived, he has the passion, he has uh, the, you know, he's uh, empathetic. Uh, he uh, he's uh, having strong personality. He is uh, having a beautiful way of communication. I am not uh, <laughs> trying to say that I am something well, so, too much know. extraordinary, you know. But I am just trying to relate that. I am just trying to um, put up some practical example in order to explain the position that I am standing right right now. So uh, yes, uh, it's not easy for any person who has spent uh, years in this particular profession to accept someone who has just arrived without a lineage, you know. So, uh, but uh, what I will say is that thanks to YouTube, <laughs> thanks, thanks to, to the YouTube. social media yeah. platforms, because it has opened the corridors for the actual talent around the globe. Uh, you do not have to wait in the queues to be appearing on the PDB or one or two or three channels, you know, and now you, uh, you have your own channel. You portray your talent. If your mm. talent has a spark, people will listen to it. People will uh, l uh, look into it and they'll share it and the world is yours. So who can stop the talent now? Well, nobody can stop the talent. No, no, yeah. no. What do you make of 
the the likes of Coke Studio in Pakistan. <clears throat> now, I, I know this year has been different. I don't know if you follow Coke Studio. I'm assuming you must to not a certain much. degree. Not uh, much. You not must much. to a certain degree. <laughs> Come on. You. Not much. Not much. No, don't have that the, much time. You know. the, this, year, do listen to it. this year has been yeah. different, but it, previous yes. years they have used a lot of influence from traditional uh, yeah. south asian classical music yeah um and you know they they have rendered versions of mm. kawalis mm. um and i'm just interested to know your your kind of views on them because i mean if, even if you were to look at like farid ayaz kawal for example mm-hmm. who've appeared mm-hmm. on there uh, rahat fatih khan sahab has appeared on there as well and I mean, you you yourself mm. mix mm. classical and contemporary, mm. and they do as well. Maybe to a slightly amped up degree with you know their instrumentation, etc. What what are your views on on the work that they do in terms of bringing classical music, uh, Kowali, to a wider audience? Yes, they are doing good stuff. As far as what I've heard, uh, whenever I find time and whenever their content comes across me, uh, it um, I really like that. Like for example, I even mentioned in the break that uh, Kujam and Kujai. I mm-hmm. really love that. I really love that. But uh, uh, that's the only rendition of Kawali that I loved. Uh, s- uh, saying straight away, and I loved the way uh, Rafaat Ali Khan performed in that uh, particular track. Uh, but I think so as far as my genre is concerned uh, that's the only one that I liked uh, the rest one uh, of them I won't comment anything about that <laughs> <laughs> okay so outside of Kavali now we've got five minutes left yeah. we've spent half an hour we've yeah. spent pretty much the entire hour speaking about Kavali mm. um Outside of Kavali, mm. what kind of do you listen to other types of music? What do you listen to? What 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 other types of music do you enjoy listening to when you're not listening to Kavali? Uh, my response might make Push you. The uh, my response might make might make you laugh. Uh, for the last sixteen to seventeen years, I've listened to nothing other than Kavali. Can you believe that? Uh, I can actually because um, the, the one Kavali is half an hour long, so that's sixteen, ex- seventeen exactly. years, just like that. You know, you know, if I play uh, uh, as Ismi as Kavali for two times, I can easily reach from Gujarawala to Lahore. Yeah. You know, yeah. so uh, so that's how it, it works. Plus, that's just like uh, um, real life simulation of beat. I must say that. Yeah. When you have uh, the voice of Aziz Mia or Sabri Brothers in your in your in your ears, oh, why do you? And Hansab, and Hansab. <laughs> Why would you need Hansab the weed? Hansab, you have to take the weed. What do you do, man? It's all about preferences. You know? Of course, of course. Uh, likings and this. No, never, I've, I've, I've never used the word dislikings. It's only about the preference yeah, and personal likes, personal likings. Of course it is. Um, <laughs> you know what? It's been wonderful having you in the studio. I've got to say, um, a man after my own heart, I think, is, is, is the phrase. Because uh, <laughs> literally, an hour has gone like that. And uh, I, I I could continue chatting to you for another hour, unfortunately. But <laughs> unfortunately, you, I'm assuming, have things to do. Uh, and I have the rest of the program. Uh, I'm going to end. Yeah, yeah, of course. Thank, uh, thank you so much for inviting me onto this um, interview. Instead, the pleasure is all mine. And I actually really love uh, talking to you and sharing my own views on the different points of Kowali, you know. And I have a very you know, important annou- announcement to make as sure. well. Because uh, in, uh, on this 26th, inshallah, I'll be performing live uh, with the Minhaj Welfare Foundation in Manchester. So whoever uh, are my fans in this particular area, I'll uh, li- really ask them to please come to the uh, come to the occasion. And inshallah, we'll meet and uh, we'll inshallah have nice to chat Good. over there. I will get Nitha to take the details, uh, and we'll we'll add that into our Asian diary at the end of the program, uh, so we can we can definitely mention that. Um, I'm going to end with one final track from yourself. Okay, uh, it's uh, Tera Astan, which I'm going to uh, take up to the news. Just tell me a little bit about this before I play it. Tera Astan. Mm. Okay, it was the tenth track, tenth spell. I named it the last spell because that was the last track of my first album of short short Sobi spells. So uh, Tera Astan is basically the amalgam of uh, six to seven poets, uh, five poets I think, so including uh, me. Uh, it contains the poetry of uh, Shahad Azim Abadi, uh, Ustad Iqbal, uh, Sayyid Nasiruddin Nasir and Jigar Murad Abadi, and including me. 
uh, it basically is uh, the second name that I wanted to give to it was Baname Ilahi. My first track was Baname Hyder alayhi salam. Second was uh, Baname Aka sallallahu alayhi salam. And this was the last track with which I wanted to end this particular uh, album, first chapter. So I wanted to name it Baname Ilahi. But it was uh, somehow, you know, uh, cliche. So uh, that's why I named it Tera Asta. Your uh, house. Beautiful. This will take us up to the news. Uh, one thing I will say mm. is next time you are in the area, mm. you must come back again. Sure. You must come back again. And we'll have a full do kente mm. <laughs> with just you. Inshallah. You promise? Inshallah. Inshallah. Zarur. Gal is done, as they say. Uh, this is the son of Muhammad Sami to take you to the news. Uh, on the other side of that, we've got this evening's Destination Rewind with Diljeet Dosanj. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and then uh, the Asian Diary at the end of the program as well. You tune into Destination on BBC Radio Lancashire. News is coming for you next. <laughs> Tera asta, tera asta, tera asta, tera 